Now to the very latest on North Korea, and it's wait and see what the, quote, Yankees do. That's what Kim Jong-un said today, or Jim, Kim Jong-un, excuse me, is saying after claims the North Korean leader has been presented with plans to launch missiles into the waters near Guam. Now with the back and forth rhetoric between our two countries intensifying, so has fear for some here in the islands, including children. Tonight, going beyond the headlines, we talk with the psychologist and the governor about the situation. From social media to 24-7 news channels, the information can be both overwhelming and alarming. This afternoon, in a one-on-one -on -one interview with Governor David Ige, I asked him about the concerns posed by North Korea. Obviously, if Guam can be a targeted island, so can the Hawaiian Islands. So what are your concerns when you look at that issue? First and foremost, it really is about preparing our community um, for what actions we should take should there be an attack. You know, we do believe that the threat is very low, um, but we do believe that it's time to update our procedures and, and have the conversation about what we would actually do in the event that uh, there was one. While Governor Ige doesn't believe there's any reason for immediate concern, some parents have expressed their concerns, unsure of how to calm their children and their fears about the threat of a nuclear attack in the Pacific. The Department of Education told us families should refer to the city and the state's emergency management guidelines, that there's no plan for now for any classroom discussion on potential attacks. So we turn to a family psychologist. First of all, we tell them that they're not alone, nor is this Hawaii's first time um, needing to prepare itself for something spooky and scary. Whether it be the threat of a natural disaster or something worse, Dr. Alana Coffey cautions that before you dive too deep into any conversation with your children, consider their age, their awareness level, and their maturity level. I think maybe seven and eight and nine is when they begin to really pay attention to social media. They're looking over our shoulder as we watch the news. So in those cases, um, if they have questions, we address them as honestly as possible, but also as simply as possible. Now the teenagers, they are seeing this, they're mining for this information on their own, on the social media. So we might ask them what they already know and see if we can fill in pukas that they might have or clarify misinformation that they might have. Now, Dr. Coffey says if you have any other questions, you can always check with the Red Cross, utilize the services of a family therapist, or speak with Kupuna, those who have lived through various types of threats and or disasters.